All right, let's get back to Washington uh, with the International Monetary Fund asking countries to control fiscal spending and rebuild their buffers, which could be difficult in the world's biggest ever election year, while other economies, especially in developing countries, are grappling with high debt levels. The director of the fiscal affairs at the IMF, Vitor Gasper, disclosed this earlier today while launching the latest fiscal monitor report of the IMF. The global economic and financial outlook has improved. Inflation has fallen, financial conditions have eased, and risks to the global outlook are becoming balanced. It is time to shift focus to fiscal policy. Four years after unprecedented and unprecedented pandemic response, public debts and deficits remain elevated. After sharp declines in 2021 and 2022, public debt and deficits edged up in 2023, undermining momentum for their return to pre-pandemic levels. In fact, only half of the world's economies tightened fiscal policy last year, down from 70% in 2022. As a result, Global public debt edged up to 93% of GDP in 2023 and remained 9% points above uh, pre-pandemic levels. Moderate fiscal tightening is expected to resume this year, but significant uncertainty remains. In 2024, a record number of countries with more than half of the world's population are holding elections. Evidence shows that in election years, realized deficits are 0.4 percentage points of GDP higher than budgeted. Looking ahead, global public debt is projected to approach 100% of GDP by the end of the decade. This rise in global public debt is primarily driven by China and United States, where public debt is now higher and expected to grow faster than pre-pandemic projections. Loose fiscal policy in the United States exerts upward pressure on global interest rates and the dollar. It pushes up funding costs in the rest of the world, thereby exacerbating existing fragilities and risks. While modest fiscal tightening is projected over the medium term, it will be insufficient to stabilize public debt in many countries. And the current policies, primary deficits will remain above debt stabilizing levels in 2029, in about a third of advanced and emerging market economies and almost a quarter of low-income developing countries. Higher real interest rates and lower medium-term growth prospects add to debt pressures. For low-income developing countries, scarring from the pandemic has been most significant and financing most scars. Against this backdrop, our latest fiscal monitor calls for durable and credible, and credible fiscal tightening to safeguard public finances. The size of the necessary adjustment varies across countries. The required fiscal effort is particularly large, around 2.1 percentage points of GDP, for emerging markets with rising public debt to GDP ratios. The pace of consolidation should be calibrated depending on the fiscal risks and macroeconomic conditions that each country faces. Tackling debt and deficits today helps avoid more painful adjustments later. It would also create budgetary space for priority spending and to deal with future shocks. Fiscal tightening would also be important an important contributor to completing the last mile of disinflation, especially in economies characterized by excess demand. While strong public finances favor sustainable development, in the absence of economic growth, even sound public finances will eventually be undermined. In the long run, economic potential is mainly driven by productivity growth, and productivity growth, in turn, is driven by the production and diffusion of innovation. Fiscal policies have a role to play in directing innovation and ensuring that the overall gains are fairly and widely shared. The Fiscal Monitor provides a novel model-based framework to evaluate the case for targeting fiscal support to promote innovation in specific sectors. The gains are largest when the sectors with the highest spillovers are targeted, but 
Mistargeting is a risk. If support is generally to the wrong sectors, policy gains can turn into sizable losses. The chapter explores the risks of political capture. Ultimately, international cooperation is crucial for attaining the world's innovation potential, in addition to addressing multiple imminent challenges, including global debt, which is the theme of the next fiscal monitor, and artificial intelligence, on which we have a forthcoming staff discussion note. I would like to conclude my remarks on climate change, where international cooperation is essential and existential. 2023 witnessed a continued increase in CO2 emissions. It was also the hottest year on record, with temperature exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Tackling climate change will require a comprehensive combination of policies at national and regional levels. It includes fiscal instruments, both taxation and spending. Crucially, emissions are a global externality and decisive global action is long overdue. Leadership by major players, including China, India, the United States, the African Union and the European Union would be a game changer.